Donald Trump famously didn't have very many legislative victories. Beyond his disastrous tax cuts and COVID-19 stimulus, acts of Congress were pretty rare during his time in the White House. But he did still do a lot through executive action. In fact, he issued more executive orders than Barack Obama or George W. Bush did in their first term. The Muslim ban, attempting to kill DACA, rolling back climate regulations, sanctions on China, and more. And the effectiveness or lack thereof of any one of his executive orders was determined by how his cabinet implements them. Not to mention that the cabinet has a bunch of regulatory power on its own without the president doing anything. Federal appointments, especially cabinet appointments, are one of the most important tools that a president has at his disposal. In this series, we're talking about how Joe Biden, now that he's been elected, can be a more progressive president. In the last episode, we talked about how to fight far-right extremism with the presidency. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how to build a progressive cabinet. I'm Ian Stevens, and you're watching The Lucretia Report. As I was editing this, Joe Biden announced three of his cabinet secretaries. Those are Andy Blinken for Secretary of State, Alejandro Mayorkas for Secretary of Homeland Security, and Janet Yellen for Secretary of the Treasury. These are not the three people that you're going to hear me pick for these, but I decided to leave them in because I thought that it was still valuable to hear what progressives should be looking for from these secretaries. So I'm going to give a couple of caveats first. Firstly, I'm going to name a person for each cabinet secretary that I think would be a good match but these are by no means the only names that I think would be a good match. I'm going to be talking about the kind of person I think Joe Biden should be looking for when he's filling these roles, and I think that my list fits that mold, but I also think that there are lots of other lists out there that could fit that mold too. I just selected my favorite for each position. Second of all, I'm filming this on November 20th, and I wrote this on November 19th, so if Joe Biden announces any cabinet secretaries between now and the time you watch this, I don't know about this. As I was writing this, he said that he was going to try to announce Treasury around Thanksgiving, so that might have already happened. Sorry if that's the case. And third of all, I'm going to be talking about the cabinet secretaries and not people like the EPA administrator. While those positions are very, very important, they would probably make this video too long. I also want to say that I don't give a hell what Mitch McConnell thinks of these people. Joe Biden's a Democrat, and he should get a Democratic cabinet. The people elected Joe Biden, they didn't elect Mitch McConnell to be the president. So if Mitch McConnell doesn't like these people and Mitch McConnell doesn't want to hold a vote or wants to block your nominations, then use the Vacancy Act, use recess appointments, use whatever you need to do, but get your own cabinet, Joe. We'll start first with what are usually considered the lower cabinet secretaries, and then we'll move to the top four, state, defense, the treasury, and justice. Let's start first with the Secretary of the Interior. The Department of the Interior and its secretary are responsible for maintaining America's natural resources, and are also responsible for administering a number of programs for indigenous peoples. Also, alongside the Departments of the Interior and the Department of Defense, they're responsible for maintaining most of America's federally owned land. The main things we're going to be looking for in a Secretary of the Interior are someone who's going to roll back any attempts to exploit federal land for fossil fuel extraction, prevent any privatization of federal land or national parks, and raise up indigenous peoples who have been historically economically disadvantaged and have been hit especially hard by the pandemic. A lot's been done under the Trump administration to try to give fossil fuel companies the opportunity to extract resources from federal land. Even right now, they're trying to auction off the Alaskan Arctic Wildlife Refuge. Stopping schemes like these should be one of the first priorities for the Secretary of the Interior. One good progressive option for this is Governor Jay Inslee. Because most federal land is in the West, Secretaries of the Interior traditionally come from Western states, and they're often governors. Being the governor of Washington, Jay Inslee is both. During his presidential campaign, he made climate change his number one issue, and in fact, his climate plan became the model for sweeping climate plans. This kind of focus on climate change is exactly what we need in a Secretary of the Interior. Governor Inslee has also been an advocate for eliminating cost barriers to national parks, and he's made preserving clean water a priority. 
Governor Inslee is exactly the kind of climate-focused Secretary of the Interior that we need to make a real difference right now. Outside of the Interior Department, most federal land is run by the Department of Agriculture, including the Forest Service. The Department of Agriculture is also, as you would expect, responsible for regulating agriculture, and they administer SNAP, which you might know as food stamps. The Secretary of Agriculture in the Biden administration should be someone who's willing to fight against food monopolies like Tyson Foods, who make it virtually impossible for small farmers to compete, and someone who's willing to expand SNAP benefits. A progressive Ag Secretary would also be someone who's eager to regulate the way that agriculture affects the climate. 10% of U.S. emissions come from agriculture, and creating regulations and programs to encourage things like soil carbon sequestration would be an important role for an agriculture secretary. My choice for agriculture secretary would be Jim McGovern, a congressman from Massachusetts. McGovern is one of the most progressive members of the House of Representatives, and those views extend to the realm governed by the Agriculture Department, too. He once did the so-called food stamps challenge where he lived off of $21 a week for food to display how little food SNAP benefits actually provide, and he supports a massive expansion of SNAP to bring that number up. He's also a climate activist who supports sustainable farming techniques. Donald Trump appointed a hedge fund manager to be the Secretary of Commerce, but a better idea would be to appoint someone who wants to break down income inequality and doesn't have a vested interest in perpetuating it. The Commerce Secretary mostly deals with data and industrial standards, and under the Biden administration, it should be someone like Rohit Chopra, a former assistant director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and a member of the Federal Trade Commission, also one of Elizabeth Warren's mentees. Chopra's a populist who wants to break down corporate power. He used to be an advisor to the Secretary of Education on the student debt crisis, and he sued two for-profit colleges, leading to their dissolution. He's also non-controversial enough that he could probably easily get confirmed, even with Mitch McConnell in charge. When he was confirmed to the Federal Trade Commission, the vote was unanimous. For the position of Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, I would recommend the notorious Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib of Michigan. HUD is responsible for exactly what it sounds like. And a Secretary of Housing and Urban Development should be someone who's committed to increasing the availability of affordable housing through increased funding and zoning reform. Tlaib fits this mold. She's a member of the House Financial Services Subcommittee on Housing, Community Development, and Insurance, where she's been a critic of Trump's HUD for ignoring low-income tenants. But more importantly than that, though, she signed on to the People's Housing Project, which is a progressive plan for housing which aims to end homelessness and treat housing as a human right. Rashida Tlaib as HUD secretary would be a champion for housing justice and might actually put a real dent in America's housing crisis. Joe Biden's platform during the election included building public transportation networks in any city with over 100,000 people and building a substantial high-speed rail network. His Secretary of Transportation will have to be someone who can effectively implement that plan. The position is usually held by local officials who have experience managing public transportation for good reason. A great contender for the Biden administration's Secretary of Transportation would be Phil Washington. He's the CEO of the Los Angeles County Metro, and he used to lead Denver Regional Transportation. Los Angeles isn't known for having great transit, but it has gotten significantly better over the past few years, and Washington's played a role in that. This is a cabinet position where I think that Joe Biden already has pretty progressive plans, and we need a competent administrator to carry them out more than anything. For Secretary of Transportation, we need someone who knows how to run and build mass transit, and Washington fits the bill for that. It's also nice that he supports two of my pet issues, congestion pricing, and free public transportation. We focused a lot on climate so far, talking about how different cabinet secretaries can and should use the tools at their disposal to fight climate change. And perhaps one of the ones that has the most impact on climate change is the Secretary of Energy, who's in charge of regulating the energy supply and also making policy recommendations and conducting research into the same. This should be, by far, the number one consideration when selecting a Secretary of Energy. But also, the Department of Energy is in charge of regulating nuclear weapons, so sanity's pretty high on the list, obviously.
You're probably getting used to having fossil fuel executives in this position, right? Well, what about a green energy executive? Andy Levin, who's also a congressman from Michigan and the former deputy director of Michigan's Department of Energy, is the CEO of Levin Partners LLC, a green energy company. If we're going to have an executive in this position anyway, which, you know, happens, then why don't we at least have someone whose interest is in developing wind and solar and not coal and oil? Levin was also one of the first members of Congress to sign on to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal, so I don't think that we have any reason to doubt his climate change cred. Appointing him to be Secretary of Energy would single-handedly move America's climate policy ahead by a leap and a bound. 45 million Americans have student loans, and millions are in default on those loans as the price of higher education continues to rise. In a progressive administration, solving this crisis should be the number one priority for the Secretary of Education, who is in charge of administering Pell Grants and other federal loans. Under the Higher Education Act, the Secretary of Education and the President are empowered to forgive federal student loans, and that should be done as soon as a Secretary of Education is confirmed. The Secretary of Education must also avoid falling into the trap of allowing charter schools to resegregate our school system. Someone who I trust to do both of these things is Zakia Smith-Ellis, who used to run higher education in New Jersey and has worked in the Department of Education previously. Zakia Smith-Ellis not only wants to forgive student loans, but she also wants to make college free. She would be, in short, amazing. Over the Department of Veterans Affairs, we'll keep this one short to save space for the big ones, because the main thing that we're looking for is someone who would not allow the Veterans Health Administration to be privatized, and I don't think that the Biden administration would allow that to happen anyway. But Mark Ticano, the chairman of the House Veterans Affairs Committee from California, and a member of the House Progressive Caucus and the House Medicare for All Caucus, would be a good choice. One of the most well-publicized of these is the Department of Labor, where many people are calling to appoint Bernie Sanders. The Department of Labor regulates worker safety and employee rights and enforces laws related to the same. It also administers unemployment benefits. And so for a Secretary of Labor, we'll need someone who is willing to expand unions, who wants to crack down on violations of worker safety and employee rights, and who will expand the welfare state. It's obvious that Bernie Sanders should be at the top of that list. He's been a champion for all those things for as long as he's been in politics. I recognize, though, that out of pure political considerations, it's probably unlikely that Joe Biden will appoint Bernie Sanders to anything. So failing that, how about Sharon Block from the National Labor Relations Board, who, like Bernie, is also a champion for organized labor and for employee rights, and wants to pass labor reform laws that she says would save our democracy. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the Secretary of Health and Human Services is more important than ever. But the pandemic will probably not last for Joe Biden's entire term. So we need a Secretary of Health and Human Services who will be progressive throughout the entire term and not just the first year of it. The Department of Health and Human Services is in charge of Medicare and Medicaid, the CDC and the FDA. And in a progressive administration, it'll be absolutely essential that we pick someone who's committed to expanding access to health care and lowering drug prices to fill this position. We'll need someone who will allow drugs to be imported, will lax drug patents, and will expand Medicare and Medicaid to allow more people to be insured. Someone like Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal of Washington, who's been a mentor to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and to Ilhan Omar, and who signed on to Medicare for All from the very beginning. Her plans would expand health insurance to millions of people, and her appointment to this position would be enormous. Regarding the Department of Homeland Security, well, in all honesty, the DHS should probably be broken up. But while it's still around, some of the Trump administration's most heinous policies have been related to immigration, and with a good Secretary of Homeland Security, we can reverse many of them. The Secretary of Homeland Security under the Biden administration should be someone who will end the abuse of detained migrants and will allow more people to come into this country legally so that they don't have to immigrate illegally. Julian Castro, who has already been a cabinet secretary over at HUD, ran for president in the Democratic primary and put together one of the most progressive immigration plans in the field. His plan includes a pathway to citizenship for most undocumented residents, expanding the visa system and ending the backlog of visa applicants. 
increasing refugee emissions, strengthening labor rights for guest workers, and even decriminalizing illegal immigration. There should be more people in America, and immigrants should not be mistreated. I'm confident that Julian Castro will work to make both of those things a reality. And with that, we finally get to the big four, the Secretaries of State, Defense, the Treasury, and the Attorney General, who have the most public positions and, although they may not be any more important than any of the other ones, will define the administration the most. The Secretary of State, who runs diplomacy, will need to be someone who's ready to negotiate global climate action and to rebuild our alliances. They'll need to be someone who puts diplomacy before military action, and they'll need to be able to work with the Secretary of Defense, who we'll be looking for a very similar point of view from. The Secretary of Defense will also need to be someone who's ready to work with other countries and won't jump immediately to wanting to bomb every part of the world. They'll also have to be able to work towards nuclear disarmament, and they'll have to have great climate change credentials because they'll be responsible for decarbonizing the military. The Secretary of the Treasury will need to be someone who's ready and willing to use the levers of government to break down economic inequality and corporate power. And the Attorney General will need to be someone who's focused on fighting white supremacy and on supporting civil rights and voting rights as those things are rolled back nationwide. For the Secretaries of State and Defense, I would go with Russ Feingold and Ro Khanna, respectively. Russ Feingold was a senator from Wisconsin who voted against the Iraq War and was famous for being the only member of the United States Senate to vote against the Patriot Act. This foresight cost him re-election, but he was then appointed to be the U.S. Special Envoy to the African Great Lakes and Congo Kinshasa, where he mediated between warring parties and took on the challenging task of negotiating peace deals in a region where peace deals are known to fall apart. Ro Khanna is a congressman from California who serves on the Armed Services Committee and has been one of the most vocal advocates for ending the wars in Yemen and Afghanistan. Last year, he put forward a framework for progressive foreign policy, and his appointment to Secretary of Defense and his influence on the Biden administration would undoubtedly move it to the left. For Secretary of the Treasury, I would of course go with the obvious choice of Elizabeth Warren, who came up with the idea for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and has been one of the most vocal advocates in America for breaking up monopolies, regulating big tech, taxing the rich, and providing adequate benefits to people suffering from the COVID-19 pandemic. If Elizabeth Warren were nominated to be the Secretary of the Treasury, I would be amped. And finally, for the Attorney General, I want to see Doug Jones, the outgoing Senator from Alabama, appointed to this position. I think that the Attorney General should focus on civil rights, and Doug Jones made his career as one of the most prolific civil rights attorneys in America. Most famously, he prosecuted members of the Ku Klux Klan for the 16th Street church bombing, where they bombed a black church, killing four and injuring dozens of others. These 15 people, or people like them who have the same values and want to do the same kinds of things, would create the most progressive cabinet in American history, and they would move American policy in a markedly more progressive direction. I'm not under the impression that I'm going to get my dream team cabinet from the Biden administration. These are aspirations, not predictions, and it's very unlikely, extremely unlikely, that this will be Joe Biden's exact cabinet. In fact, most of these people will probably not be cabinet secretaries. I'm just hoping for one or two of them, probably. And if we don't get any, then I'm hoping that at least Joe Biden picks people who have the same kinds of ideas and values, because like I said, there are lots of people for each of these positions that have these same kind of values, and I only named one for each of them. If any one of these people gets to be a cabinet secretary, that on its own would be a very big deal. So let's cross our fingers for that. Maybe after his cabinet is fully announced, I'll make another video talking about how progressive it actually ended up being. Let me know if you want to see that. If you enjoyed this series and you want to see the rest of this series, be sure to subscribe. And also, we have a new topic suggestion feature on our website, so if you have a topic you want us to cover in a video, in a blog article, a story you want us to cover in the Week in Review, or if you want to suggest a guest for one of our live streams, please go and suggest that at lucretiareport.com. Six Semper Tyrannus.
Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did, please be sure to give the video a like and comment down below. You can watch another video here and please consider subscribing here. Follow me on all my social medias, link in the description. And also special thanks to Rebecca S. and Mainly for their support on Patreon. Join them at patreon.com slash Lucretia Report. I'll see you next week.